Hey everybody, happy Wednesday evening. How's everybody doing? Wherever you, ah, that, seven degrees. Okay, I'm cold just watching, I'm, I'm cold just reading that. Ah, sorry, Lori gave me a fright. Hi everybody, welcome to uh, the Beating Dreams stream coming at you live from Dallas, where it's not, thank God, seven degrees Fahrenheit. Um, we are supposed to get a, a, a solid temperature drop um, on Friday. Um, we are going to go from lows in the 50s to highs in the 50s, and that is the beginning of winter in Texas. But seven, seven degrees? Ah, no thank you. So, welcome to the Beating Dream stream. Hope everyone is doing well. Um, wherever you are out there in the internet, Lori, I hope you are staying warm. I hope you have furnaces and sweaters and kitties to keep you warm and snuggly. I am so happy that, that, that it is um, warmer than that here in Dallas. So, there you go. Yes, throw blankets and sweaters and yeah, oh, do not underestimate the um, double purpose of a laptop as a lap warmer. So, welcome to the Beating Dream stream. This evening's tutorial is going to be this. This is a pearl and leather lariat. So, it's just a basic knotting class about leather and pearl. So, let's real quick talk tools and supplies for this evening's tutorial. So, you're going to need some 1.5 millimeter leather. And however much you need is really going to depend on how long you want to make your lariat, how many times you want to wrap it around. I've got about six feet of 1.5 millimeter leather for my project tonight. You're going to need some large whole pearls. And so I have my whole um, bowl of large whole pearls, so I'm just going to kind of select from that. When I say large whole, what I mean is pearls that are specifically drilled to accommodate leather or cord. Typically, your large hole pearls are going to have um, anywhere from a 1.5 to a 2 millimeter hole. And then I am going to use one larger accent pearl that's going to be for the bottom of my lariat. And I'm going to need a little bit of hypo cement to secure my knots. As far as tools go, all I really need is a knotting tweezers and a good sharp scissors or snips. So I'm actually going to start my lariat with the loop. So the cool thing about the loop on this lariat is it's actually a sliding loop. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to make this loop. When you're wearing your lariat, you're going to go ahead and put it over your end beads. Pull it up as far as you want whether that be above the first bead or above the second bead, just depends on how tight you want your lariat, how much you want hanging down, and then what you can do is you can actually push on this knot to tighten it down so that your lariat will then stay there, okay, as opposed to a lot of times when you have something like that, it'll just keep, okay, I really did, I've been drinking caffeine all afternoon. Apparently not quickly enough, but a lot of times with lariats where you'll drop the end through a loop, they'll just keep getting tighter and tighter and tighter and tighter and tighter. I know, Lori. <laughs> okay, I'm drinking caffeine. I promise. I'm going to drink more. So having the loop that will get smaller will prevent that from happening. So we're going to start by making that loop, and then we're going to go ahead and knot our pearls. So that means I'm going to take my leather. And I'm going to go to the end, and I'm going to flip back around about six inches of my leather. So I've got a loop here, and I have one short end of leather here, and then I've got the rest of my long piece of leather on the other side. Now I'm going to figure, I'm going to want about an inch of length in my loop, so I'm going to hold about an inch here, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my short piece of leather and I'm going to start coiling it and what I'm going to do is I'm going to coil it back towards this loop. So I'm going to coil once, twice, three times and notice what I'm doing here 
is I'm coiling fairly loosely, okay? So there's still space between that leather that I'm coiling and the leather that's part of my loop. So I'm gonna take my end now and I'm going to thread it through the tunnel that I've created by my coiling back towards my right thumb. And I'm gonna call that my working end. So I'm threading my working end back through those coils grab it and now here's the trick is when you're tightening this don't just high core this don't just yank it thank you thank you I'm happy to be back though I know Heather took very good care of the stream while I was gone okay so when you're when you're pulling this don't just yank this end what you want to do is you want to gently pull it and you want to use your other hand to kind of keep all of these loops of cord together never yank anything well I mean I guess that depends on the context but for now what I have now is this nice neat and tidy barrel knot so this little piece now is extra Wow she allowed you to stay date stay late and eat all the candy Sounds like um, an auntie stream to me. Yes. <laughs> no discipline. No discipline was enforced apparently while I was gone. None. None discipline. That's okay. I was dealing with drunken fencers, so there really wasn't any discipline there either. <laughs> I was not a drunken fencer. I was just at the event with the drunken fencers. And um and the the uh the person putting on the event or one of the two is a husband and wife who do it is a college buddy of mine. And so we got to spend a solid fifteen minutes reminiscing about all the completely dumbass shit we did in college and just like just hanging our heads and just being like, What were we thinking? But hey, at least we survived it mostly intact Tim still has a he still has a like pressure point on the inside of his eye I don't know if I've told you this story Heather no but from one night when um, he and my boyfriend and I went to Scarborough Renaissance Festival and we camped out which you actually technically weren't allowed to do but we did it anyway and they let us because we seemed relatively harmless harmless but we definitely had alcohol and Tim and my boyfriend decided that they wanted to fence because they were fencers. So we're at the Renaissance Festival and we're all dressed up and we're having a good time and now it's we're out, we're camping and you know, we, they want to fence, they want to fight. And they didn't bring any of their fencing equipment. So they had purchased during the day two wooden swords of the variety that they sell to children which seems oddly appropriate considering what happened next. Mm -hmm. So they start bouting with the wooden broadswords, which first of all are only like this long because they're designed for children. And these are, these are fencers who are used to like, you know, weapons which are at least twice that long and also not made of wood. So, and then they're drunk. Don't, don't forget that they're drunk. And so, um, you know, Justin comes in, yeah, seriously, Justin comes in with an, with an overhead thrust, and, and Tim doesn't get out of the way, and of course neither of them are wearing glasses like I am, so, so Tim doesn't get out of the way, and, and Justin literally pops in right here in the eye socket with the wooden sword. Like, thank the Lord that he didn't actually literally stab his eye out, but like immediately <laughs> it starts to swell, and you know black and black and blue but of course no we're not we're underage drunk and stupid are we gonna go to the and broke are we gonna go to the emergency room of course not come on so yeah he just got a very interesting black eye and um it took a solid like two or three weeks for it to finally like decompress and and become mostly normal again but he was he was like, man, I'm pretty sure he, he you know, hairline fractured something because that shit hurt for like two years. So yes, 
The moral of the story here is do not play with swords when you are young, stupid, and drunk. Or old, stupid, and drunk. Or old, stupid, and drunk. Basically, it's a stupid and drunk part. Yes. I mean, really, you can play with swords at any age as long as you do it safely. It's it's the stupid and drunk parts that are going to cause you problems well into your 40s. Oh, and just the fact that anytime anybody says the word Goldschlager, it's just like, a, 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 you know, a shiver down the back of my spine because that, that was a huge, huge thing in college. And again, just, oh my god, so bad. So many bad choices. So many bad choices. It's a miracle that I'm here to teach you today how to do the leather and pearl lariat. I realize I got... We're not doing gold schlager schlotz on these. Oh, hell no. Schlotz, we're going to do schlotz. I, I will do gold schlager schlotz if people will pay me $100 a schlot. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to say that's my baseline for returning to my um, ill-spent youth is $100 a shot. And it's going to increase by at least a factor of three for every subsequent shot. But if I can pay our rent this month by doing gold schlager shots, I will do that. But they have to be called schlots. <laughs> Pretty sure. I am not above this. But. No, I, I will help. I mean. <laughs> um, but yeah, okay, so this is our loop. And so once again, when we want to compress it down. dollars for each of us. There you go. We're going to. Pull on that to compress it down and then to widen it back out. We can go ahead and pull on that. Now what I want to do um, to make sure that this doesn't come undone, again Corvus, the answer to that question is if you will pay me, I will do almost anything. I still have, um, I still have fencing weapons. I could. I could totally drunk fence for y'all on stream, but once again, gotta see the money first. And we're gonna wear safety goggles. Well, I mean, theoretically, we should be wearing fencing masks. Though, I don't have a fencing mask anymore. I donated, so when I stopped fencing, I did, um, no, Ace, that's not the point. Um, when I stopped- Gold, yes. Yeah. Yeah, when I stopped fencing, I donated all of my uh, fencing gear to the University of Houston Fencing Club for folks who didn't have the means to procure their own. So I don't actually have a fencing mask anymore. But yes, if, if Heather and I were to actually engage in um, drunken fencing post Goldschlager shots, there would definitely be some facial protection that would be involved. All right, so now I'm going to shrink this down to a reasonable size, which is about an inch. And now we're going to start adding our pearls. And I love knotting with pearls because it is just so easy and so incredibly forgiving. All right, so we're going to start by making a knot a couple three inches from the end of our loop. Remember, when we shrink this down, this portion is going to get longer, so I tend to cheat this knot a little bit closer to my loop than the rest of my knots. And all I'm going to do is make an overhand knot. So I'm lit literally going to take this cord, go around my hands, fingers, fingers, that's what those are, around my fingers and pull it tight. Like so, I'm going to grab a pearl. And I'm going to thread a pearl, and I'm just grabbing from my mixed dish here, so I'm not going to really pay too much attention to um, what the colors are. I'm just going to kind of let them do their thing. All right, and then I'm going to make another overhand knot. They are Corvus, I know. Another overhand knot over my fingers and through. Okay, so that's my knot. Now, this is where my tweezers are going to come in, okay? So I'm going to take my tweezers, and I'm going to go through that knot and grab 
and then pull. That's going to help me position my knot. See how that knot tightens right on the tip of that tweezers? That's going to help me get it um, right where I want it. And then I'm going to go ahead and just take my tweezers out and push that knot down. Also, um, on the sales stream, I will tell you all about some of the other cool things that I did learn. So the event that I did this weekend was a combination uh, vending and learning uh, event. Uh, which was super fun, put on by my friends Tim and Idy. They did an amazing job, um, did an absolutely fabulous event. Um, so I got to sell some great jewelry, but I also got to take some classes and learn some really cool new things. Um, my, I think my, it's a tie um, as to what were, I, I took three classes and two of them were definitely tied for my favorite. Um, one I really, really enjoyed, it was a lecture and information class on Katarina Sforza, who is a complete badass in her time. Um, so that was definitely my favorite as far as information, but as far as um, applicable skills, I took a class on making handmade aglets and finger loop braiding, and that was so much fun. I kind of want to teach finger loop braiding online, but I'm not quite sure how to do it, so stay tuned for that. Um, but yeah, the aglet and finger loop braiding class was so fun. And I realize that most of you have no idea what an aglet is, and that's okay. I'm just going to sit here in my own little weird nerd space for a minute and be really happy about the fact that I know how to make aglets now, and I am going to make so many aglets, and it's going to be so much fun. And everyone's like, what are you saying, woman? Are you crazy? The answer to that is probably... Okay, so I've got my first pearl on, now I'm going to make my second knot. Now, there's a couple ways you can do this type of thing. We could do this like a tin cup knotting necklace where I have like a, um, <laughs> let's see, any tips for a fifth date, Shaquille Oatmeal? Well, you could make aglets and do finger loop braiding. I mean, I guess it depends on what you and your boo are into. Um... Hi, Barb. It's true. Barb is absolutely 100% correct. So, so these days, um, we use plastic aglets. So, 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 okay, sorry. I, I can't, I can't not with the knowledge. I'm sorry, y'all. Um, so yeah, so, so an aglet is a stiffened something that goes on the end of a lace that enables you to poke it through a loop and, and pull it through to do something like lace a corset, lace a bodice, lace a sleeve onto a doublet, etc. So we still use aglets to this day, but most of the time they're made of plastic like the little thing on the end of your shoelace, but it still serves the same purpose. It's a stiffened thing that enables you to poke the lace through the eyelets and lace your shoes. So, um, so yeah, so I learned actually how to make metal aglets and, and this is something that you can come across actually in the ready-made market today, but most of them are very big. So the benefit of making them yourself is you can make them a lot more slender, a lot more petite, and um, easier to use because you don't have to make your eyelets the size of a, you know, freaking cave in order to get your aglet through them. But yes, so, so modern aglets mostly are made of plastic, but the concept still survives and is utilized to this day. So yeah, I may or may not teach aglet making. I may do aglet making as a freeform Friday. Um, I don't know if anybody's actually interested in that, but the finger loop braiding is, is really fun. It's, I mean, it's basically just a way to turn a thinner cord into a thicker cord. So that's, you know, I mean, you can always go buy a thicker cord, but there's just something about the rhythm of it that's really fun and satisfying. Um, Shaquille Oatmeal, uh, shoot, I will take your second question whenever you want. Oh, goodness. Well, yay for you for taking care of people's kitties, Barb. That's awesome. Okay, so let's talk about the spacing here. So, couple of options. Number one is you can take a cocktail straw or a coffee stir, um, basically a very thin straw like we would do if we were doing a tin cup necklace. Cut it to a particular particular length. Goodness. Um, put it on here and that will help you measure. That's option one. Option two is you actually can measure on a ruler. Option three is the option that I'm doing. We can just eyeball. I can't even imagine. Barb, like, I mean... Six weeks of family in town and kitty sitting, like, 
bless you for that because and part of this is because my house is very small and when my family is in town I have to sleep on the couch but after five days I'm like bye fam it's been fun but see you later um that's an interesting question Shaquille O'Meal I mean I I personally am right seriously Barb um, my stance about anything is that is that more communication is better than less. So, and I and and at this point in my life, sorry, I'm once again not teaching nodding. But um, at this point in my life, I can point to many more conflicts and problems that arose from lack of communication than my camera just doesn't want to focus. Okay, so I'm soft focus Allison at the moment. There we go. Um, I can point to many more problems that arose in my past life from lack of communication than have arisen from excess communication. I mean, I, I don't think I can actually point to a single problem that arose from excess communication. So I don't think you can communicate too much with your partner, with your friends, with your coworkers, with, you know, your subordinates your your you know superiors like communication is I think the silver bullet for a ton of problems that's just my advice once again I am just some rando on the internet so you don't have to take my word for it what's that from I feel like that's from something not the internet part but the you don't yeah you don't have to take my word for it I feel like that's a reference to something Okay, so I'm using the eyeball method, which means I'm going to take what I've done so far, and I'm just going to make an overhand knot, and then I'm going to tighten that knot. And so what I'm doing is I'm just kind of eyeballing the distance. I want it to be a little bit further than the distance from here to here, because like I said, this is going to get bigger once I cinch this knot down, and I'm just going to pull that. And then put on another bead. Yeah, I will say, you know, the older I get, so then we're going to knot that. And this is where I'm going to grab my tweezers, grab right next to my bead, and then pull. But yeah, the older I get, the more I appreciate the value of, of conversation and, and the more I, the less I see it as weakness. Um, the leather is gold, Corvus. You are correct. It's kind of a bronzy gold, so it's got a little bit of a green, um, green cast to it. Um, unfortunately, I wasn't necessarily raised in the healthiest manner. Um, so, you know, when I was growing up, it was like if you had to talk about it, that meant that somebody was doing something wrong. Typically, since I was raised by a narcissist, it meant that the person who wasn't the narcissist was doing something wrong because um, I wasn't reading the narcissist's mind. And really just talking, it just, it's so much better. Um, how do you bring that subject? <laughs> um, how do you bring, bring up that subject without coming across as pushy, Shaquille? Um, I'm going to go with just don't be pushy. You know, I mean, there's intent comes, through. intent comes through. Heather is absolutely not wrong. So, listen to what your partner. And once again, okay, I'm not a therapist, so don't go like hanging everything on on the words of advice in the beating dream stream. But listen, actually listen to what your partner is saying. That goes a huge way. Um, to informing the conversation. So I'm just going to keep doing this until I've got um, pearls on all of my leather. Um, I, I, you know, and as somebody who's had partners who who don't really listen, like I, I will say like there's a very palpable difference between having a pushy conversation and having an earnest conversation. Like you have to listen to what the other person is saying and not just what you think they're saying, what they're actually saying. Like, listen to their words. If you don't understand their words, ask for clarification. Like, 
because there's this also this whole like faux conversation thing out there um okay well I, I oatmeal I can't tell you that because I don't know you and I don't know your partner but I can say that you know if you should feel comfortable bringing up topics that you want to discuss as long as you do it in a fashion that is sensitive and again just listen listen to her if you bring it up and and she's like no i'm not ready to talk about that then stop like, like really the whole thing about not being pushy is don't be pushy like no means no and this is a thing that that applies to conversations as well as physical actions like you should feel comfortable saying whatever you want to say but you should also be willing to... I'm not! Yes, this is not the therapy stream, this is a beating dream stream. Note. Whoa, where the hell did my logo go? I just realized that it's not in this stream, but, but I promise you it does not say... Um... There we go. See, beating dreams, not therapy dreams. I've been the recipient of a lot of therapy in my life, and I'm currently the recipient of a lot of therapy, but just like, it's it's so much easier, I think, than a lot of people think it is. It's like, the, the key to not being pushy is don't be pushy. Listen to your partner, you know? You should feel comfortable bringing it up. If they say no, then, then no means no. No means change the subject. No means stop talking about it. You know, that's, that's the thing. How do you not be pushy? Don't be pushy, but you got to listen. And there's not, I think, enough of, um, emphasis, emphasis placed on listening in our culture. Oh my God. No, no, nobody wants dating advice from me. Nobody wants dating advice from me. Oh, my Lanta, no. I am not a role model. I am a cautionary tale. For real. I mean, but if, if you want to do a bad dating advice site, Shaquille, I'm, I mean, I'm down for it. We can, you know, we can find a way to monetize this and then split the profits, but we definitely have to have some kind of waiver because I do not want anybody suing us because, you know, they got in a, you know, slap fight with their baby mama and fell in Lake Ray Hubbard or something like because of something I said like no no I, I, I want indemnify and hold harmless for any of my dating advice because it's guaranteed <laughs> to be not great oh my god um but also by the way thanks for coming on Shaquille Oatmeal it's good to see you Oh, the problem is I, I, I will wax rhapsodic about things that I have no credentials in. Just lots and lots of bad choices. But that's, Heather also makes a really good point of like, it, you know, it's like, really listen when you're listening and converse when you're conversing. And that sounds elementary I have the credentials of life Barb oh lord I have the credentials of the the I'm not gonna say I have the most checkered dating history because I know that's not true but oof checkered definitely describes it though also I will say like there's there's benefit to both there's benefit to talking to your friends and colleagues who have and, and just you know getting the benefit of their various experiences but that's not a substitute for actually talking to a professional and and that is one of the things that in really hey let's let's talk about my checkered relationship history um that's one of the things that has been uh troublesome in my relationships in the past of, of people being like, well, you're so, you're so good. You're so empathetic. I can just talk to you. And it's like, no, I'm, that's, that's different. Like, you know, I can empathize and, and I can, I'm a, 
a somewhat perceptive person, I like to think. But, um, you know, there's nothing that, that substitutes for somebody who's actually an educated professional. Also, Heather just made a very fantastic point. Heather, who is also an extremely perceptive human. <laughs> who I'm, I mean I'm not gonna gonna denigrate Heather's dating history as checkered but I am gonna say that she has a fair amount of life experience as well I mean that that sounds valid she kill oatmeal I mean I do know that um, it can be it can be helpful to have a sort of a script in your head and and this goes for a lot of a lot of different types of conversations so you know if you're feeling anxious about it hi silver um if you're feeling anxious about it like and you want to have a script i think that's a good way to go you know i absolutely think that's a good way to start but ace is right just you know accept that it's a conversation which means that it's not you've got a starting point that's great but then it's gonna go where it's gonna go and once again listening 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 it's a thing it's a thing that is actually a skill that a lot of people don't have Okay, so all I'm doing here, I've, I've been talking more about, um, I mean, you know what, Shaquille, as long as you're being sensitive and listening, I think it sounds great. Um, okay, so what I'm doing here, by the way, is this pearl and leather lariat. I'm just knotting each pearl in between two knots on my leather. <laughs> Okay, so Keiko, oh my god, Keiko, hi, I am a dumbass because Heather sent me your number so I could try and meet up with you at the Renaissance Festival on Sunday and I was an idiot and got on site and my dang phone wouldn't work, which I knew, which I knew from, from working there back in the day, I just thought they would have fixed it by now so I'm so sorry Keiko if you feel like I abandoned you on Sunday it was utter dumbassery and not on purpose at all I'm so sorry I didn't even tell you that Heather no you didn't well I mean when have you seen me today today um and it's okay Shaquille you know what we're here for each other it's what we do but I I, I really wanted to meet up with you on Sunday I'm so so uh, classic ace that was not nice. <laughs> Maybe we're curious in the microwave again. Oh my god. I'm stealing that one, Silver. Yeah, it totally was. I'm so sorry. I f <sighs> like I said, I thought that in the past 10 years they might have fixed the whole you can't text or call anybody while you're on site thing, but oh no, 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 no. Also, I will say, I, I did call it a pretty short day because it was humid AF and I felt like a, gr oh my god, it's giant. And I felt like a grody sponge that was just like squooshing like sweaty bodily fluid water like, all oh, it was so gross. It was so humid on Sunday in Houston. Ugh, yuck. But I hope... This no said sponge said sponge said sponge was so moist with with humors and and fluids it it was it was horrifying like it was so bad Ew. oh god yes it was a stinky sponge <laughs> like oh my god it was so now actually one of one of my friends who works there um he was like. I look good on the surface, but under here, he's like gesturing to his um, pantalons, he's like, under here is water country. It was just so gross. Oh my god. 
Yeah, I was damp and st a bit steamy damp and just, oh. Okay, now I'm going to finish. Oh, God, I know, but, but, mm. awesome, Keiko. But I feel like baby powder in this situation would just turn into, into, into baby scented mud. I don't know that that's actually better. Hmm. I know, right? Baby paste. Okay, I'm gonna go back to freaking nodding. Oh my gosh. But yeah, I actually, Keiko, I left at three because um, my friend had a blister. My other friend, her husband who works there, got released early because it was slow. And, and poor, poor Vanda, she was like limping, limping around trying to just like be a good sport. And I was like, um, go home, take your limpy foot and go home. Like if I want to stay, I can stay by myself. Like go home with your, like, take your husband and your bleeding foot and like go home. And so they, they left and, and I basically just kind of squelched my way back to the, the, <laughs> more and more fun. I know, right? I squelched my way back to my friend Kelly's booth so I could get some feathers from her, and then then I then I squidged my way out to the parking lot, and then I just kind of collapsed in my car with the air conditioning on like full blast for a solid ten minutes. It would have silver if I had one, so I ordered. Uh, yeah, I ordered a bunch of test tubes on Amazon, and they should be here tomorrow so I will have bodice chillers in the future so here's an okay I fucking suck at teaching but here's an interesting um thing about me and bodice chillers is for most of my life I have had not very much in the bosom department now I have gotten completely fluffy with the pandemic and all of a sudden I have I've got these things on my chest I don't quite know where to what to do with so um I, I never looked into bodice chillers before because I never had the had the the depth for them because they would actually stick out farther than the the breasticles. But now now that I'm this size, they are definitely okay. They're not large tracts of land; they're just larger tracts of land than I used to have. So so yes, I have bodice chillers on the way. But again, that was. <laughs> Oh goodness! Well, you know we're we are a delight of uh, anachronistic terms here on the Beating Dream Stream, but um, but yeah, um, so so yeah, so bodice chillers were not on the roster until after Sunday. Now they're absolutely on the roster. Also, if anybody needs a bodice chiller, I had to order twenty five tubes on Amazon, so those may wind up on stream at some point. Okay, so if you don't have a tweezers, you can do this without. Okay, you can do this by just making a knot, and this is really easy in leather. All you're going to do is you're going to hang on to this loop and just sort of scooch down your knot, and then pull on it, and you can actually accomplish that nice tight knot without a tweezers if you don't have one. Well, and I actually, I do have a beautiful hand-blown bodice chiller from years and years ago, but that thing is like this wide, and I even, I don't, I, even in my current state of fluffiness, I do not have the, the bosomage to support that. So I'm using that for um, mm, propagating plants. All right, so I will say that the obviously the tweezers is easier and quicker. And despite the fact that I am eyeballing this, I still have um, pretty decent spacing. That, of course, is something that comes with practice. So I am going to um, shamelessly plug for a minute um, what's going to come up in a little bit on the Beating Dream stream. So I'm going to finish this project in probably about 10, 10, 15 minutes, and then we are going to take a brief break, and then we are going to be back with a live merchandise sale stream. So I'm going to continue with 8-inch strands on tonight's sale stream, and I might pick a couple 
of fun, cool things to show you um, possibly at a discount. So that's going to start probably around 7.45, run for an hour, hour and a half or so here at twitch.tv forward slash beating dream. If you're not able to join us for the sale, I will be back on this channel tomorrow streaming another tutorial. Our lunchtime tutorial tomorrow is going to be this. These are our hammered crystal earrings. Yes, that means you get to bang on stuff. So if you've been having a frustrating week, tomorrow is a good tutorial to get your frustrations out on some metal using a hammer. Um, and then tomorrow evening is Torch Thursday, and we're doing something Torch-like on Thursday. I can't remember what it is. But, um, yeah, so tomorrow is going to be fun. Tonight is going to be fun. Of course, the sale is where all of the crazy shenanigans happen, though I've definitely done some shenanigating on this particular stream as well. Um, so if you can join us for the sale at 745, I absolutely would love it if you could. If you can't, try and join us tomorrow at noon or at 6 p.m. for our tutorial streams. Um, Friday is going to be a Zoom crafty cocktail hour. That's when we actually get to see everybody's faces. And um, that will be from 6 to 8 p.m. on Friday. And then Saturday we'll be back with another tutorial um, and a live sale. Okay, so... We've got just about a foot of leather left. So I need to make sure that I've got enough to knot all my end pieces. I think I can put on one more bead and then we're gonna do the end. So we're gonna go ahead and do a knot. And a bead. That bead's on the floor now. We're gonna do another bead. Bead. And another knot. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and do the focal bit. And so for the focal bit, I'm going to just knot three beads in a row, one of which is slightly larger than the rest. So I'm going to start with a knot. And I'm going to put on a bead. And then I'm going to knot right next to that bead. Like so. And then I'm going to put on another bead. I'm going to knot right next to that bead. And then I'm going to put on my final bead, which is going to be my larger focal bead. And I'm going to knot right under that bead. And once again, I want that to wind up right next to the bead, so I'm going to use my tweezers for that. All right, and then I can get rid of my extra. So, and I'm going to grab my glue and just drop a tiny bit of glue on that knot just so that it doesn't come undone. And that is my completed pearl and leather lariat. So the way that I'm going to wear this is I'm just going to wrap it around my neck once or twice. Twice is going to be a little bit tight, but... We'll make it work. Drop it through the center and then take that knot and pull it tight. Adjust everything so it's not completely choking you. And there you go. That is our pearl and leather lariat. So, yay, Heather's amazing. She just sent the Zoom email. If you haven't Zoomed with us before and you want to be included in that email list, go ahead and email us beatingdreamsdallas at gmail.com. We'll make sure you get the credentials. Of course, if you have Zoomed with us before, it's going to be the same meeting as always. And Heather did just send that email with the credentials. So we'll look forward to seeing you all on Friday. Friday. 
So, thanks so much for hanging out with us on Wednesday, though for the Pearl and Leather Lariat. So I'm Allison from Beading Dreams in Dallas, Texas. We are an actual brick and mortar retail bead store. We're here on Lover's Lane in Dallas, so all my locals, of course, you know we're here to feed your need to bead 1 p.m. to 6 p.m. Monday through Saturday. You can find us on this channel, twitch.tv forward slash beading dream five times a week with complimentary tutorials. We stream Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday at 6 p.m. Central Time plus Thursdays at noon. Thanks, Lori. We'll see you in a bit. And live merchandise sales every Wednesday and Saturday at 7.30 p.m. So that means we will be awesome. We'll see you in a bit, Keiko. So we'll be back on this channel, twitch.tv forward slash beating dream with a live merchandise sale in just about half an hour. It's going to be around 7.40. <laughs> Disclaimer. <this. laughs> right? <laughs> so, we will be back on this channel, twitch.tv forward slash beating dream in just about half an hour um, with a live merchandise sale. Um, so, it's going to be around 7.40. So, we'll see you all then. Um, hopefully, everyone, right? I know, right? We give, I definitely give extra everything for verbiage once I have extra libations in me. So, everyone therapist no oh no one wants me as a dating coach it's so bad no no oh you're doomed Shaquille you're you're totally doomed if you take my advice that's not completely true no, but good oh good okay I, I have I've corroborated from an independent source that I gave good advice but still have a fun I I mean that's that's fair Shaquille I'm I'm just saying like you know disclaimer Disclaimer, disclaimer. All right, so I'm going to go get my stuff together, grab some stuff for the sale, and I will see you all back on this channel, twitch.tv forward slash beating dream with funny stories, beads to sell, possibly dating advice, and um, regaling you with tales of my weekend in the 16th century. So um, everyone, grab yourself a cocktail, grab yourself a snack, don't forget to hydrate. We'll see you all back on this channel, twitch.tv forward slash beating dream in about half an hour. Bye, y'all.